this good. And I'm a witness to that. And I know a lot of you are witnesses to the fact that God is good. Hallelujah. I bring you good news today. The name is Glory Land Seekers How. And um, I am Samuel Judah, God's favor once again. And I'm here to share you with you that with the Lord has placed on my heart to share this day. And we're only going to have an introduction to it today. And I know that from the introduction, the Lord will minister to you powerfully as well in the name of Jesus Christ. But before we do that, let's have a word of prayer. My Father, we want to thank you because you are God. You are good. You are awesome. We appreciate you for your love and kindness. We appreciate you for your grace upon our lives. We ask, oh God, that you will have your way in us this day and you'll continually be glorified in and through our lives, even around our lives, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. As we go to the pages of your work this day, to have your way in glorified, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. The topic for this day, which we'll be having the uh, introductory part of it, is titled, Not by Power, Not by Might. Our text is taken from the book of Zechariah chapter 4, written from verse 1 to verse 10. Zechariah chapter 4, written from verse 1 to verse 10. And I read from the King James Version. And the angel that talked with me came again and walked and with me, as a man that is waking out of his sleep, and said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick of all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and a seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees placed by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my lord? Then the angel talked, that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof, with shout and crying, Grace, grace unto thee. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who had despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummets in the hand of Zerubbabel with these seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. By way of introduction, Israel had been in serving and be serving in Babylon for 70 years under the Babylonian Emperor until King Cyrus of Spasia defeated the Babylonian Empire and gave them freedom to go back to Jerusalem to fulfill prophecy. Now the prophecy was actually given by Prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 29 verse 10 to verse 11. Uh, it is written, But thus said the Lord that after 70 years they accomplished at Babylon I will visit you and perform my good word towards you in causing you to return to this place for i know the thoughts that i think towards you say the lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end now when the prophecy came israel heard it and it went into record daniel while he was in babylon few years before the expiration of the 70 years said in daniel chapter 9 reading from verse 2 to verse 3 the bible says in the first year of his reign talking about darius i daniel understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the lord came to jeremiah the prophet and that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of jerusalem and i set my face unto the lord god to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes hallelujah this was a man who came to the understanding of what god was doing and what god has declared and decreed upon the nation of israel and he decided to seek the face of the lord to fast 
to pray and to really trust God for the manifestations of the promises of God concerning Israel. Now, it was recorded that Daniel sought the face of God powerfully. And for at some point, the Bible made me to understand that gracefully God raised King Cyrus, King Cyrus to restore Israel. Now, concerning Cyrus that God used to restore Israel at the expiration of the 70 years, the Bible said concerning Cyrus, a, a Gentile king, the king of Persia, the Bible says thus in verse, in verse 28 of Isaiah 44, the Bible says that saith of Cyrus is my shepherd and shall perform all my pleasure, even saying not to Jerusalem that shall be built and to the temple thy foundation shall be laid. God raised up a hidden king to restore Israel to their promised land. Now, the, 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 the challenge there is if a man could be found to intercede on behalf of the land, God could do wonders. If God could raise a man in you, a vessel in you, to, to, to intercede on behalf of the nation, on behalf of the family, on behalf of the, the church, you can imagine what amazing things God can do. He could even use even unbelievers to bring the promises to fulfillment. The question is, is there a Daniel in you praying for liberty from captivity? Are you really seeking to be delivered from a captivity that you find yourself in or that your family find themselves in? Are you a vessel with Daniel's heart interceding for the liberation of your family, your church, your nation? Where are the watchmen of our generation? God wants the best for us, you know. But the enemy wants the worst for us. And that's little why now the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, pray continually. And I pray that God will find an intercessor, a prayer warrior, a general of intercession in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God Daniel prayed. If he had not prayed, only God knows how many years would have been added to that captivity. Daniel fasted and prayed in all humility. Now, I want to give a little reference to the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis chapter 14, 15, verse 13, God told Abraham that Israel was going to spend 400 years in the land of Egypt, in a, in a, in a strange country. 400 years was, was, was in, intended. But when you look at Exodus chapter 12, verse 40, the Bible recorded that 430 years was recorded as the years they spent there. We just have to thank God that God raised or allowed a king, we knew not Joseph, to come upon the throne to make them cry out for deliverance out of Egypt. What is your Egypt right now? Are you comfortable in the land of captivity? Are you comfortable in a strange land where the presence of God is not awesome, where the presence of God is not powerful, where you don't really have God manifesting in all his entirety? When will we be ready to call upon the name of the Lord as the children of God did eventually, as Daniel did? The Bible says in Acts 2, verse 21, it says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2, 21. Beloved, in life, there must be three major things about our walk with God. Number one is that we must, there must be acknowledgement of trouble. Acknowledgement of the fact that we have sinned against God, we have done some things that have brought us into captivity. And when we talk about the acknowledgement of trouble, we're talking about where we find ourselves in servitude and in severance. Servitude, that is, we talk about the fact that we know that we, we are in captivity. Something is just wrong. We're not just, we're not just manifesting the fullness of the glory of God, the power of God, the presence of God. We're not seeing it the way it ought to be. And in this Sabbath, too, the Bible made me to understand that sin is what brings us to that point. The hand of God is not shortened that it cannot deliver. And you may say you're not in servitude, but how about the sin that has held you captive? In Romans 6, verse 16, the Bible says, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are whom, to, whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. 
if you are still held bound by a particular sin, you are in servitude. And you need to really trust God for deliverance from that servitude. And sin is what separates us from the presence of God. It's what separates us from the power of God made manifest. It's what separates us from the manifesting the glory of God in power. That's what brings severance from God. In Romans 6.23, the Bible has made us understand for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Jesus wants to restore us. He wants to bring us back to God. He wants to bring us into a full restoration of our glory, our dominion, and our, our walk with God. We must give heed to the fact that God is calling us and to repentance, God is calling us to, as to acknowledge our servitude, to acknowledge our sins and repent from it. And then when we do that, the question, the, 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 the second point comes in, we, we must accept, we must, we must have an acceptable attitude in trouble. We must really humble ourselves instead of being hardened. Many a times we, 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 we face one thing in life and we complain instead of humble ourselves to seek the face of God. Someone will say, why me going through a particular trouble or the other? Why me? When you say, why me when you're going through a challenge or the other? It's probably because you don't understand the move of God in your life. Probably you don't understand the dealings of God with you. At some point in my life, I said to God, God, your hand is too heavy on me. I thought God was being too strict with me. Fine, today I understand it better that him, the Father, loves and chastises. I'm not a bastard. I have a father up there in heaven who watches over me and who wants the best for my life. He wants to use me to his glory. If God wants to use you, if God finds you a vessel worthy of honor, he places his hands on you, deals with you as a father would try to bring up his child to disciple the child to bring the child to the place of uh of maturity and at such point some things can be really painful and tough for the child we must humble ourselves israel find themselves in captivity not because they were they were they were too righteous to to be free they found themselves in captivity because they were they are sinned against god god led them into captivity because of their sin and when Daniel realized that they that Daniel had realized that he, he, he made a very priestly prayer that was full of humility in that Daniel chapter 9, verse 3 said, he said, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Now, this was a man who humbled himself. He had an acceptable attitude in trouble. He humbled himself before God. David prayed in his own time when he realized that he had sinned against God. Instead of being too hardened to come back to God, he prayed, he said in uh, Psalm 51 verse 1, he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. This was a man who chose to humble himself and ask God for forgiveness, who chose to seek God to restore him to, this, to, to, to the place of fellowship. Instead of hardening his heart, Israel hardened their heart. Little wonder Nehemiah, when he prayed in Nehemiah 9, verse 30, the Bible says, He prayed, He said, Yet many years did thou forbear them and testifies against them by, by thy spirit and thy prophets. Yet would they not give ear. Therefore, givest thou them into the hand of the people of the lands. Israel refused to repent. Israel refused to be restored. And so God gave them over to cruel kings and nations to torment them, to punish them for their sins, for the hardness of their hearts. Beloved, I want to challenge you this day. I want to encourage you this day. I want to enjoin you this day to learn to humble yourself. Seek the face of God and call out to God for help, for 
deliverance from all manner and all forms of captivity when we find ourselves. God wants the best for us once again, I said. The number three th points we, that we need to understand that in, in life is that there must be acceptance of deliverance from trouble. You must be willing to accept the provision God has for you. God has great promises for you. In Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that we read earlier, the Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. You don't have to sentence yourself to destruction. There is a severity of God quite all right. We must understand that God is God can be tough on sin. At the same time, we must understand that God wants you saved, wants every sinner saved, wants every backslidden soul restored. The mercy of God is available for that. God has made provision for our restoration into, into, into the fullness of his glory and presence and joy. Do not sentence yourself or allow yourself to be sentenced because of sin. In Romans 1 verse 18, we have a, a very tough record there that humans, people decided to be hardened, to sentence themselves into what was not palatable, what was not God's plan for their lives. In verse 18, it's in that Romans 1, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. That's because there is the severity of God. He said, the, verse 21 says, because that when they knew not God, they glorified him not as God. Then that were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Beloved, we must wake up to righteousness. Verse 28 makes us understand that even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. At the end of the day, the Bible recorded in verse 22, it says, Who knowing the judgment of God that they, they which commit such, such things are worthy of death. Not only do they do they the same, they, but they have pleasure in them that do them. So God, understood, God knew that they decided to sentence themselves to destruction. God is not pleased that anybody should be destroyed. But God wants us to be saved. God wants us to be restored. Don't sentence yourself. You find yourself in a particular sin. Don't, don't just stay there. Wake up. Stand up from there. You fall into sin. Arise. Arise. Though you fall seven times, rise up. Keep rising up. You will stand someday. The grace of God is available for that. God wants to restore, to restore you. God wants to keep you strong in Him. He wants to save you. He doesn't want you to continue in the land of captivity. He wants to restore you to your promised land. He, if I thought you have never been in the promised land, He wants to bring you to the promised land He has made and prepared for you. God wants us saved. God is a loving and a compassionate God. Jesus will never reject a penitent sinner while yet alive. In Luke chapter 19 verse 10, he said by himself, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You and I. Jesus came to this world to save us. In John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, the thief coming up above to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Abundant life is one of the provisions of God for us. To live forever, not to die at the end of our tenure here on earth. And because of the purpose of his mind that made him come to this world, it continues interceding for us after he has ascended to heaven and sit at the right hand of the Father. In Hebrews 7.25, Hebrews 7.25, the Bible says, Wherefore he is able to save on them to the uttermost, them that come to God by him, seeing he ever liveth to intercede for them. Jesus is praying for you right now. Jesus is praying for us right now. We must key into the intercession of Christ for humanity. We must key into the plan and the program, program of God for you and I. Why would you perish when Jesus has paid the price? Why would you continue in the land of captivity when the land of the promised land is available and yet to be inhabited? 
a lot of things have to be done in your promised land you need to break up your fallow ground why would you continue in captivity when there is freedom in christ jesus that sin cannot continue to hold you bound if you are willing to step up to the new level where god wants you to be the level of sonship the level of dominion the level of righteousness the level of standing in righteousness and abiding in faith pleasing the father not being a man seeker but a god pleaser why stay down in sin when you can rise up from it through the grace of god which abounds in christ jesus the bible says in john chapter 1 verse 14 john 1 14 bible says jesus came full of grace and truth he came full of grace and truth and that grace and truth is available for you and i why not shake up the beast of sin and every form of unrighteousness into the fire of holiness and righteousness by the holy ghost this day god is calling you come out of captivity come out of that scene begin to pray now begin to cry out to god now for your deliverance from captivity deliverance from sin deliverance from everything that has held you bound hitherto and if you are saved already you are baptized already you are called you are called upon the name of the lord already don't forget your family don't forget your loved ones don't forget the hidden nations don't forget your country we need to come out of captivity and not come out alone we need to come out in mass we need to deliver souls with passion from the bondage and captivity of sin and from the doom that is pending over their lives beloved i challenge you this day let's wake up let's come out of our captivity whatever sin that has held you bound whatever thing that is that is still keeping you comfortable in egypt i pray that god raise something to stir you up from it to wake you up and jack you up that's not where god wants you to be god wants you in the promised land he wants you in your promised land he wants you delivered and i pray that as you wake up to this challenge as you wake up to seeking the face of god this day god will walk on your life and deliver you completely in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ it shall be well with you mind we pray together right now our father and our god we want to thank you you are good to us your mercies endures forever Thank you for these ones that have heard your word. I pray you walk on them. I pray you take over their lives. Thank you for that soul that is crying for help now. I pray you deliver that soul. Lord, touch that soul. Bring that soul out of the miry clay, out of the fields of sin. Yes that unrighteousness that immorality bring her out yes lord bring, yes deliver that soul deliver that young man now in the mighty name of jesus set him free set him free thank you for that lady that is crying out now asking that you set her free from immorality from that addiction lord set her free receive your freedom now receive your freedom receive your deliverance in the mighty name of our lord jesus christ oh thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you for what you're doing right now in the lives of these souls thank you for that intercessor let him wake up to a glorious walk with you strengthen his feeble hands and knees Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do have your way continually in our lives. Have your way in this nation. Have your way in our church, in the body of Christ. Let the blood of Jesus speak for us. Let the glory of God be made manifest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We ask and pray your glory be revealed mightily henceforth in our lives and all around us, in your church, in the name of Jesus. Bring us to our promised land and help us to possess the land, to take over the situation under your power and your might. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank God for your life. Come next week, we continue with the part two of not by power, not by might. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.